honor him, worship him. We're here for worship today. And uh, uh, so that's the way our hearts need to be right now, is in a worshipful uh, attitude. And uh, be in prayer for George as he brings our Sunday school lesson. And for GA as he brings our uh, morning service. And for Brother Larry and Margie as uh, they lead us in music worship. And Danny Beckham is going to be bringing our special music today. So pray for all of these right now. Be prayer. Keep them in your prayers right now. And uh, as way of announcements, ladies, if you haven't been coming on uh, Tuesdays, to Miss Betty's house for this mission, women's mission group. Uh, we have fun, don't we, Jean? Amen. <laughs> we do. <laughs> and I mean, uh, we work and uh, we pray and uh, we lift others up and, and that's our goal. And so if you can make it, it's going to be this Tuesday at 10 o'clock at Miss Betty's house. And, you know, when there's food there, you know, when there's food, people will come. So there will be food, <laughs> ladies. So uh, y'all be there, and uh, this is, I think this is going to be a very worthwhile uh, mission for our church. And then uh, we're still having the, I guess we're still on Hosea? Yeah, we actually finished chapter 5. Okay, we got through so chapter 5. Coming up. <laughs> on Saturday. And uh, <laughs> then uh, we still have the food pantry, and if you know of anyone that needs some food, uh, or has been sick, just uh, uh, let you know, Carol, well, Carol's sick right now. Pray for her. But uh, let us know, and we'll get some food to them. And uh, then this Hilltop University Conference. Uh, I know Dottie's going. I know Norma's going. And I think Willene's going. And this is, I think, you know, they really enjoyed it last year. So and two of my friends that went last year are going again. Thing. Okay, uh -huh. so our church is sponsoring it, so it, it's paid for. And uh, But just let me know. And... Uh, Sandy Patty is going to be yes. some of the entertainment along with two other gospel groups. Yes. Okay. It's amazing. And uh, in the, the way of um, prayer requests, um, Carol and Kenzie, no, Carol and Kelsey both have, uh, I guess that stomach virus. Steve Spartman has it too. So I guess it's going around. So. We may not need to hug on anybody today, which will just kill us. But uh, uh, there's a there's a virus going around. I think, among the other all the other things. And uh, I found out that uh, yesterday that Perry Crest singer that we've been praying for, Sylvia's son, he's got a, something going on. He hasn't been able to swallow, so he is supposed to have a, a feeding tube put in today uh, to help him to swallow. And I think they're going to do some tests on him. And then uh, we've had Felix had Feynman on our in the nursing home. This is Bubba uh, Feynman's uh, uncle, I believe it is. Yes, and uh, he passed away. So we need to remember, I think Bubba was close to him, so we need to remember that family in our prayers. Sir, when did that happen? I just found out this morning, uh, I guess. Yesterday. 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 So any other prayer requests? Marta, there are so many unspoken, and uh, mm -hmm. even spoken, the, the, the names, the list of names are so long. I mean, obviously you can look at our prayer requests and see that, but there's so many people hurting right now and, and need prayer, need healing, need guidance. Uh, just, you know, but if, if we pray obedient with, in obedience, you know, the, Jesus knows yes. what, what to, it's, uh, <coughs> wow, is all I can say. Brian says there's a lot of unspoken prayer requests, and there are. Brother Larry? Yes, uh, I can pray for our youngest son, David. David? Yeah. And unspoken? Well, no, I, it, it, you know, I said, I think we've told him about it. He has some emotional issues that we haven't heard from him. In a, in so a you still weeks. haven't heard from, in a from David? Yes. Yeah, so. Okay. All right. Any other? Well, I've got a granddaughter that's about to pop. I hope this little baby Ella comes out pretty soon. <laughs> She's miserable. So y'all be in prayer for my granddaughter, for doing our granddaughter Kaylee. Uh, she, she's due this week, so we're hoping Ella makes a, a very gentle entrance. Now, her other one was like 10 pounds, 9 ounces. Oh, so. wow. <laughs> she, said, she told the doctor, I'm not letting this one get that 
beach. We're not, not going through that. She had it kind of naturally. But Carolyn, it's so good to see you. It's good to be here. We missed you. All right, if you step the house, let's bow for a word of prayer. Oh. God, praise I heard every word everybody said just now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're not by yourself, Junior, so don't talk about me. <laughs> We're sitting there, and he says, has that freezer out of the garage always been that way? <laughs> yes. We're sitting there, and we've got a little spike and a little uh, energy-efficient heater going on. He says, has that thing always been that way? I said, yes. <laughs> so, praise the Lord. All right, let's bow for a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we just thank you for all your blessings, and you give us blessings every day. Every day that we wake up is another blessing, and we thank you for that. And uh, I just pray that we will live this day for you. I pray that we're here for one reason, and that is to worship you and honor you and glorify you, and to be in fellowship with our brothers and sisters in Christ. I thank you for my day and ask you to continue to bless us and lead us in all that we do. Be with George now as he brings the Sunday school lesson, give him the words to say, and just speak through him and use him, Father. And we do pray for the service. I pray that if there's any here lost, that they would heed the Holy Spirit and give their lives to you. Be with the many, many on our prayer list. You know how long it is. You know how many unspoken prayer requests we have. I just ask you to meet each need as only you can. Be with Bubba Fangman and his family and the loss of his uncle. Just give them the comfort that they need. Just forgive me of my sins, I pray in your name. Amen. 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 Because when you're centered on Christ, you can pray without ceasing. Because everything that comes your way is automatically transferred to Him. And I love this, this psalm because it's a psalm about prayer. It's a psalm about trusting God. It's Psalm 130. And it says, out of the depths have I cried to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let thy, thy ears... Uh, be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, Lord, should mark iniquities, O oh Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, that you may be feared. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits in his word. I do hope. My soul waits for the Lord. More than those who watch for the morning. Yes, more than those who watch for the morning. O oh, Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy, and with him is abundant redemption, and he will redeem Israel from all his iniquities. And I say that because yesterday we finished chapter 5 with something that is a wonder, because God in chapter 5, verse 5, uh, 15, he says something that most of us Sometimes read past and take for granted. But this is God telling Israel, I will return. And he says to them, I will return again to my place till they acknowledge their offense. Then they will seek my face. And in their affliction, they will earnestly seek me. Some have this early, some has it uh, diligently, but the idea is you are going to look for him. For him 
to return to his place, he's telling Israel, he's giving them an understanding. If I have to return to that my place, that means I had to leave my place. To return to it, I had to leave. When did he leave? When he was made to come here. His incarnation in Christ Jesus, his presence with us in Emmanuel, his time with us. That was when he left his place. And they missed the time of their visitation. But God uses it for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. He makes it right. And because of that, we have the opportunity to be the children of God and to have life. And that's just a thought, because we all pierced him. You know, when you go to Zechariah, he says, they shall look upon him whom they have pierced. Guess what? We have pierced him. Every time we sin, think about it as if you were putting another nail into his hand and into his foot. Every time you miss the mark, every time you trespass, every time you transgress, every time you look away from him, every time you do what the Israelites do, did, in the northern kingdom when they turned away from him so far that no correction could turn them back. And, and we need to be reminded. We hear a lot that they were a stiff-necked people. <laughs> Guess what? So are we. So are we. So today, you know, last week we talked about being all in and about uh, giving it all to him. And and, and being fully invested in him without question. As were Meshach, Abednego, Shadrach, Daniel, David, who went after Goliath, the little kid going after a giant. Knowing fully that it was God who was battling. It was God who was who would win the battle, not him. To see Paul, who wrote to Timothy at the end and said, I have run my race. I have given my all. I am not ashamed, for I gave everything. <clears throat> Every part of me was given and spent for God, is what he's telling you. And it is time now for Timothy and others who come after to be spent fully for God. And when you look at that, I come to verse 4 of Ephesians. Vernon, would you read verse one, uh, 4 of, 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 of chapter 1? I don't think Yeah. I don't think I'm going to get to verse five, but I know I will get to verse four through verse four. And verse four is an incredible it's sometimes badly uh taught, but according <clears throat> according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Yes. And there are other uh, Bibles that have it a little differently. NIV takes out the in love and puts it on the opposite side. In love he predestined, or foreordained. But I am one that I'm looking at, at the Greek and can tell you that structurally it fits. Not only structurally, but contextually it fits. And in the, in, 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 in the whole purpose of this book, as he points these things out, it fits within that statement. That creates a statement. And, it, and we'll get to that. He says, when we last touched, we were, we were uh, brought, in, in verse 3, we were brought to the gift that was provided to us by our Father, who blessed us with all spiritual blessings. And we took so some time to examine those blessings. And one of those blessings of salvation is to bring us into the family of our Lord and King, Jesus the Christ. How do we come to this gift? And what does it mean to us? That was the, the point. He begins in verse 4 on how we came to this gift. <coughs> and, and, and by grace are we called into salvation. Now may I ask the question? Anyone can answer this, I'm sure. When Christ died on the cross, whom did he die for? Us. Everybody. Everybody. 
He would that none would choose death. He wanted that all would come to life, that all would have an opportunity, that all would see and receive this gift that he was providing to a world that was lost. And not just the world of that moment on, but the world that was. And that's an important thing to realize and to recognize. Because in context to this, it can be misleading us in many ways into other ways of thinking that sometimes brings people into thinking that only a few were chosen out of this. Only a few were elected. Only a few that our God, like Allah, is a capricious God who chooses at random and just picks. That is not what it's saying. And you have to look at it not only in context to what this book is saying, but what other writings that, that Paul has stated in Romans, in Romans 8, 27, 28, and 29. And you will see how this occurs. But as you choose this, he, he uses, Paul begins with, in verse 4, he came to this gift by, uh, he says, you break it down, we're going to look at it a little closer, we're going to look at the, the words and why. But he begins with the word kathos. Kathos is according to. It's, it's how, when. This is when. This is how he has chosen us. And he then uses the word eklekomai. And eklekomai is to make a choice, to choose out from, to, to select. Let me ask you a second question. Has God shown at any time that he at times will choose from the people on earth to do a certain task, to do a work? Anybody? Yes? Yes, he does. Yes. An example. Anybody? Abraham. Perfect. At the time, it was Abraham. But it was Abraham. He chose Abraham to come out of the Chaldees, out of Ur of the Chaldees, to go into a land that he knew nothing about. His, his life was in building idols with his father. They created, they, they created the idols that they would be used throughout the cities. That's what they sold for a living. So he had to turn away from that and leave that. But he knew who God was. <coughs> Not only... Abram, but then whom does he choose? He chooses Isaac, Ishak. He chooses him from instead of Esau. Why? He is the child of the promise. He is the child of the promise. He is the one who, oh, Ishmael, not Esau, Ishmael. He, he chooses the child of the promise rather than the child of the flesh. And then we have the next one, Jacob. Now, Jacob is a hard nut. Because Jacob is not an easy guy to, to begin to like. He does so many things, and, and yet God uses him and chooses him and chooses his line to bring about the Savior. And then God chooses a people. And when you look at this, you know, he does choose. He does have time to choose. He says uh, in Psalm 135, 4, For the Lord hath chosen Jacob up to himself and Israel for a peculiar treasure. So God does choose. But he has a purpose. And, there, and, and he has something that we have to realize. That God has certain attributes. One thing is, he's everywhere. He's omnipresent. The second thing is, he's all-powerful, omnipotent. He's also omniscient. He knows everything. He knew us from before we were even in the womb. He tells us this. So when you look at that, you know that he knows everything about us. There's nothing that surprises him when we do something. It's not like, oh, I didn't know he was going to do that. How did George decide to go that route? He knew I was going that route way before I even knew it. 
as you were talking about chosen, and I, I don't want to derail too far, but I think it's also important to bring into, into perspective the ones who, who we feel were not chosen. But, and I think God gave a great message right in the very in Genesis to Abel, you know, because you know, Cain's offer, <clears throat> offering, I mean, uh, to Cain, Abel's offering was received. But he told Cain, why are you wrong? Why are you upset? Because if you do well, if you do good, you will be accepted. And that's the key, if you do well. Yeah. I mean, in Deuteronomy, he does tell us these things. But if you, if you go up to Romans 8, 29 through 30, he says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. <laughs> to them that love God. To them who are called according to his purpose. See, then he says something after that. For whom he did foreknow, and to foreknow is prognosco, uh, which is to, to know beforehand, to foresee, to foreordain. He had full knowledge of where and how we would walk, what we would say, what we would do, how we would follow. He's not surprised. Because we love him, we walk in him, we, we, we live in him, we are his. It's not a question mark. So when you go back to that point, you see that, yes, uh, he knew us before the foundations of the world, before anything was conceived. The word is katabole which is before anything is conceived, before anything was made, before, the, before that centerpiece was put in place, the cornerstone, so to speak. Before that, before that, in the cosmos, in the, in the world, in the universe, before anything came into being, he already had chosen us. But he had chosen us with a purpose. He had chosen us because we will walk after him. Not everybody does. It's the sad part of what we deal with every day. The pain part is that every day we watch and see people follow after things that are just wrong. And yet, when you tell them about Christ, when you share Christ with them, when you give them the, the, the gift that God has given to us to give out, the water, the living water for them to drink, they refuse it. Not everybody's going to follow. Many are called, but few are chosen. And who makes that choice? We're the reason for that choice. We either follow him and live for him and, and, and move within him and in many cases die for him. Look at Smyrna. Look, look at each of the churches that he talks about in, in, in Revelation. One got so busy, they forgot him. They put him in, in, in second place, and then they realized that they had to turn back to him and love him the way they started, the way it all started for them. The second one was so willing to give it all for him that they were dying in, in droves in Smyrna. They would not put a pinch in the fire to incense so that that and say hail Caesar because they would not bow me to anyone else but God like Meshach, Abednego, Shadrach who told Nebuchadnezzar that it doesn't matter I'm not even going to tell you this in the nicest way possible I'm not going to gloss over this I'm not going to make this easy I'm just going to tell you there is no way I'm going to bow me to, to anybody but God our God not yours they went into the fire because they were unwilling to put God second to anything. Amen. And the question is, are we unwilling to put God second to anything? Are we ready to give it all? Are we ready to go into the fire? It's going to start getting hotter. And never at any point did they meant did they where they put in their faith being tested if God didn't save them from the fire. They went into the fire knowing that God might not save them from the fire. It, they didn't know. See, 
it, the Old Testament is so good because it gives you a lot of wonderful uh, examples of heroes. They, I call them heroes. Those who walked with him so closely that they would go to their death if they had to. Daniel in the lion's den. Did you know the best part about the Old Testament? Many of them lived. Not many prophets died. Even Isaiah was sawn in half. But many of the stories show victory, 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 everywhere. It's, it's just a wonder. But you know when we get to see the other side? See with Stephen, when he's speaking and sharing the truth with the Jews who are unwilling to hear, with those who are not willing to listen. How many times do you, people now who are praying out in the middle of, 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 of some street can be arrested in England. A woman was arrested in Birmingham for praying near too close to a Planned Parenthood. She was arrested. That's how bad it's going to get. And it's not just there. You're seeing it time after time, in place after place, in places that you never would have thought it was possible. So, so to the point where they now want to know what's in your mind? What are you praying about? And it's coming here. As they used to say, it's coming to a theater near you. And we take it for granted. We take our freedoms for granted. Do we take every day and spend time in the Word and look at His Word and say, Lord, show me, teach me, make me yours? Because that's really what it's all about. I want to be a good and faithful servant, but if I don't know how, how am I to be that good and faithful servant? If I don't understand what He wants from me, how am I going to do what I'm called to do. So, you know, God answers prayers and God will show mercy. And God tells Abraham in Exodus 33, 19, and he said, Abraham, I'm, 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 Moses, Moses wanted to, to, to see his glory, he wanted to see his face, and God says, I can't see my face. Anyone who sees my face will Here's what I'm going to do. There's a cleft there in the rock. I'm going to put you behind that cleft, in that cleft. And then I'm going to keep my hand there, and I'm going to pass by, and you'll see the, my rear side of the glory, the end of the glory. What is the end of the glory? You know, I never thought about that. Christ Jesus, isn't it? It is Christ Jesus. <laughs> we get to see Christ Jesus in all his glory. When he calls us up, what are we going to see? Our Lord in all his glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and I will be, and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and show mercy to on whom I will show mercy. God will show grace and mercy to whom he will show grace and mercy. God is sovereign. God is king. God is the one who created us. We are his. And all that has to happen is that we, we turn to him. We look to him. We present ourselves as his. And no longer look to ourselves and to empower ourselves to do whatever. What was Adam and Eve's sin? They wanted to be like God. Oh, what a mistake. Oh, what a painful mistake it has been since that time. So, and, and so when you when you read this, you see how in Romans, Paul takes in 29 uh, through 30, and he clarifies what he's going to say in 4 and 5. He clarifies it because he adds the foreknowledge in there. Without that, we have seen many people utilize that as he just chooses, just picks. 
without looking at it. And they used the, 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 the situation that God pointed to that uh, Esau have I hated. But before they did anything, before they were born, Esau have I hated and Jacob have I loved. So Esau, I will not show the mercy to, but I will show mercy to Jacob. And that can be used in a, in a way that can mislead. That doesn't change the fact that God is sovereign. That doesn't change the fact that God, in his foreknowledge, has chosen those who would follow him and has made way for it. And this is where we come to in the next portion of this. Because it is in that second portion of it that he says that we should be holy and without blame in love. That we should be holy and without blame in love. Think about that. Can, when you hear that, what do you see? What do you think about when you, when you hear that, those words? To be holy and without blame in love. Yeah. Exactly. See, can we be holy? Hagios? The word is hagios. We, we went over that the last time. Uh, and, and it means to be sacred, to be, to be morally, you know, to be consecrated, to be made, in the first time we heard it, it was used for the word saints. And in that context, it's to be consecrated, it's to be separated, it's to be pulled aside for a work. In this moment, he's talking about your, your inner man, who you're supposed to be. And it, it means to be pure, be single-minded, to be have your eyes set on Jesus, to have your what does he say to 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 in Hebrews? He tells us in Hebrews to set our minds on Christ Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. It is in that that's the purity he's talking about, to be morally blameless. Let me ask anyone, has anyone here sinned in the last week? Haven't we all sinned at some point? Have we not all reacted at some Are we morally blameless? We can't. We can't be. It is not possible for us because we always sin. That's why we have a high priest who is continuously coming before and bringing our sin and, and clarifying. Yes. Oh. And, 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 and bringing us to a place of peace with God. Consistently, constantly, without fail. So, the second word that he uses, without blame. So, oh, oh yes. When we lived in Gillette, Wyoming, there was this man that had everything. He had his own airplane, they were very wealthy. And one day, he just decided he could live and be perfect. And you know he lost his he lost his fortune, he lost his wife, he lost his children, and he lived on the streets. And one day, somebody spoke to him about God and about how he is forgiving him and all that, and he came back to the Lord. Praise God. Got his wife back and his children. Praise God. I, I heard a story just like that about a man who lost everything in San Francisco. He lost everything in the dot-com crash. He says, you, and, and I remember when I had given him some money to, to eat, he wanted to give me back change. And I said, no, no, you keep it. He says, no, God provided for today. He'll provide tomorrow. See, sometimes we have to be totally broken. We have to fall to the very depths of ourselves. That's why out of the depths of our hearts, we cry out to him. To be blameless is to be a most. That's the word he uses. To be uh, without blame, to be spotless, to be faultless, to be, with un to be unblemished. We can't do that. It is not in us. We don't have that power. But he shows us how we do. In love. Who is love? Nathan said it. Jesus. Jesus is God's love manifested here on earth 
for us so that we can see that he who gave himself for us, who paid the ultimate price, who took everything that they had to hurt him with, even as a child, you see that in Psalms. How the drunkards had songs about him. That he would do all of that for you, for me, for a world that hated him. They had not yet loved him. He said no one loved them until he loved us first. No one would come unless he drew them to their son, his son. No one would come to know the Father except the Son showed him, showed them the Father. This is a, a, a giving that we can't even understand fully. It is so beyond us that he would do such a thing for us, that he would love us so much that this is a gift he gave us in Christ. And wow! It's an amazing gift. The most amazing being the sin he took on. He hates sin. He abhors sin. Sin is what he took from us so that we could now have an opportunity for life. And every child before the age of accountability ends up in his hands, ends up in heaven. But once we're accountable, we are held to a standard of Christ Jesus. And it is in his love that we have the ability to be holy, to be blameless, to be his. We can't possibly be his any other way. We can't possibly walk with him any other way. We can't possibly do what he calls upon us to do any other way. Paul said that everything I did beforehand was nothing but dumb. He thought he was doing God's work. He thought he was doing the right thing. And once God called him, pulled him down onto the ground, brought him down to the, to the depths of who he was, and show him, you are nothing without me. You need me. Why are you kicking the goats? And Paul says, that was a gift that God gave him. To be brought down. To be shown that he was wrong. How many of us can understand that we can be wrong? It's not about being right. When we share the gospel, it's not about being right. It's about loving those who don't know him. It's about giving ourselves to others. What God is saying here is so deep. In just one verse. That through Christ, you can be holy and without blame. Through this love, this agape. He calls it agape. Agape. And he tells us, because of that, and Paul writes this in, in Romans 8, 8, 1 and 2. He says, because of that, there, there is therefore no condemnation in them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. We are free because of Christ. We are free because of the work of the cross. We are free because he was resurrected. We are free because we have life. Where once one brought death into the world, the second Adam came and gave us an opportunity for life. He doesn't force any one of us to follow after him. He never did. Not even the angels. Not even the angels who saw everything from the very beginning. Where one found in himself, in the beauty that God had given him, in the, in the perfection that God had made of him, he thought he was better than even God. And in him was found pride, and that pride brought down the Lucifer, the evil one. And he has hated us ever since. 
we have to, to recognize how, how we can be holy and without blame. We have to recognize that he didn't say Peleo, he didn't say uh, um, Eros, he did not say um, Storge, he did not talk about brotherly love, he did not talk about family love, he did not talk about uh, sexuality in, in, in love or sexual love, he talked about God's love an all-encompassing love that is forgiving and giving and totally without requirement back. Do we love each other that way? Do we love our wives and husbands that way? Do we require something back when we give something? God didn't. God was looking for us to turn. God was looking for us for our sake. Because his glory is manifested in such a way that we receive every time we're in it. Every time he is glorified, every time he is brought forth as the light that shines. When we don't have him, it is emptiness. It is the, the depths of depravity. It's, 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 it's such a loss. Anyone who, is without, who has been without God for any time realizes that loss and not having him. And I really believe that this sentence goes together in this manner. Not because uh, yes, I've heard from the scholars who talk about it through um, the Greek and everything else. And, and, and yes, I've, I've heard uh, of others who, who, who say it differently. But he, he made it very simple. He made it very simple. And and he says, Hagios kai amomos en kateno peum, atos en agape. That's exactly what he said. It's a full sentence. Basically, we are to be holy and without sin. And, and it is done in love. When we love each other, we share Christ with one another. When I look at the fact that there is going to come a time we're going to be in heaven, how many times we say, oh, I can't wait to meet David. Oh, I can't wait to meet Daniel. Oh, I can't wait. Do you know that what you were really looking at throughout that time, every single action, every single thing they did, what did you really see? You saw Christ. You saw Christ manifested in them, able to make them go through what they needed to go through. Moving, the Spirit moving and allowing them to show Him in their lives. So when we get to heaven, my take is, our only desire is going to be to see our Lord, to be in front of Him, to take every moment we can. Father, we praise you and we thank you for this time. We just pray that you will continue to just do a mighty work in this church and this people. Lord, that you will continue to share your love through each and every one of them. Because it is your love that passes through and through them to each person that they come in contact with. Not only with us and to us, but to those outside, those who don't know you, those who are hurting, those who are in darkness, those who are following after a time of absolute damnation. Lord, it is our task to share your word, to share your gospel, to share your love, to share your kindness, and to show who you are. That's what the Israelites were meant to do in the land, in the crossroads that you had set them upon. And that is what you will make of them in the end of days. But Lord, I also thank you that you use us as good and faithful servants to do your will and to walk in your ways, that you would fill this church with your spirit, that you would fall upon each and every one of us in such a way that we would not be able to, uh, to hold back sharing the love that you have given to us. Lord, that you have just provided us so much in your Son. You have given us everything we could possibly ask. Your grace is sufficient. And your kindness is shown in everything you do. Lord, we praise you, we thank you. We just ask that you be close to us. 
don't leave, don't leave any, don't leave us alone for a moment. We want to be with you. We want to draw near to you. Give us a heart for your word. Give us a desire to chew upon your word. Give us a desire to want to know you better. I pray for today, Lord. I pray